Had God wished to prohibit drinking, would he have created such a delicious wine? At the end of the 18th century, the venerable host addressed his guests thus at a banquet while serving the wine of L'Emission Aubryon. The speaker was none other than the governor of Guienne, also called by the illustrious name of Richelieu, the renowned cardinal being his uncle. Had God wished to prohibit drinking, would he have created such a delicious wine? Indeed, a wise retort, for divine presence plus the excellence of the wine are two essential keys needed to penetrate the very special realm of La Mission Aubryon. But let us look back a few centuries. The founding of the domain, noted in the Bordeaux archives, dates back to the beginning of the 16th century. Then, in 1682, one learns of the arrival of the congregation of Lazarists, or missionary priests, who henceforth took over the running of the estate. This order, founded by Saint Vincent de Paul, sealed the destiny of La Mission Aubryon. The vineyard benefited enormously from the great know-how and experience of these winemaking priests. They struggled to develop and improve their estate, juxtaposed between the communes of Pissac and Talence. Its gentle slopes then as now were blanketed by the alluvial stones and gravel that later came to give the name to the region. It was here on the estate that the heavenly nectar was born and passionately nurtured in simple wooden vats by these humble men of God. Fulfilling their daily duties in the vineyard, they never lost sight of their original mission, to lift the spirits of mankind. The beautiful little Gothic chapel by now the heart of the property was consecrated in 1698. It became the symbol of La Mission Aubryon. The revolution did not spare the good priest of Monsieur Vincent. The domain known as Aubryon La Mission changed hands and in 1821 came to be owned by a colonial settler from New Orleans by the name of Célestin Chapilla. He bestowed on the property its final name Chateau La Mission Aubryon. But Chapilla and later his son did a lot more. They worked passionately together to improve the techniques of vinification on the 20 hectares that make up La Mission. In 1862, their efforts were amply rewarded. La Mission Aubryon received the gold medal at the Universal Exhibition in London. From that time on, the ceiling of the chapel no longer had any space remaining to receive the golden inscriptions that listed the greatest vintages produced by the estate. In 1919, the Voltner family became the owners and ran the property during the next 64 years. They enthusiastically labored to further perfect this jewel of a vineyard, which became a Cru Classé de Grave in 1953. The passage of this family will forever be symbolized by the ornate arches which grace the facade of the chateau and were imported by them from Toledo in Spain. On the 2nd of November 1983, the Duchesse de Mouchy, granddaughter of Clarence Dillon, heading the family company, already owner of Chateau Aubryon, bought the neighboring estate. In keeping with the efforts of the former owners, the Dillon family renovated the old shears. In 1987, built a thoroughly modern vat room and installed a state-of-the-art bottling facility. A new tasting room was also established in the former monk's oratory. Inasmuch as the Dillon family has taken on this incessant quest for perfection, worthy of this eminent estate, they also endeavor to retain the special magic ambiance of the place, with this auspicious combination of mysticism and calm. One redecorates with care, totally aware of the need to conserve the atmosphere of yesteryear. All is done in an effort to preserve the heart and soul of La Mission, under the kindly watchful gaze of the monks portrayed in the 16th century stained glass windows. And naturally, this effort encompasses a striving to assure with each vintage, the excellence of the wines from this exceptional vineyard. Le Chateau La Mission Aubryon, famous growth, veritable treasure of the Grave. 
Chateau La Ville Aubryon, also classified in 1953, is anxiously awaited every year by the lovers of this great white wine. And one mustn't forget La Chapelle de la Mission Aubryon, the second wine of the property, made from the younger vines that also enjoys an enthusiastic following. Since the Good Fathers, their complicity with the vines, and thanks to non-flagging efforts and innovations that are essential in maintaining a very high quality, the wine of La Mission Aubryon has managed to keep its unique personality since the days of the Cardinal's nephew. A deep gold with bursts of sunlight and amber for the white wine. And the shade so rich and dark, the round voluptuousness, a profound elegance and grace that personify La Mission Aubryon. Assuredly, Monsieur de Richelieu, this grace must possess something of the divine. Yeah.